interesting and motivating stories. So today I know, I know she allows herself to just allow that inspiration from within to express itself through her as she shares with us this morning. Sandra. Thank you, Vance. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is really, really my joy to bring the message this morning. This is a balmy, balmy, warm Sunday morning. I'm even more delighted that you made the choice to, to be here, here, whether in person or via the internet. Every one of you this morning made the choice, as Phaedra said, to get up, to dress up, and to show up. And so I want to acknowledge you big time for being here. So I want you to turn to your neighbor. No, say it first to yourself. What a blessing it is for me to be here. I'm not convinced. What a blessing it is to me to be here. And now turn to your neighbor and say, what a blessing it is for you to be here. Now, when I heard Phaedra this morning, I said, okay, we can go home now. She boxed the whole of me talk out of my mouth. But we, you know, in training, they say that you have to visit, revisit the content six times for it to really sink in. Well, I'm not going to do it six times, but we're going to hear some of the same things. But it's just really powerful and positive reinforcement for our way moving forward. And, and so yesterday, we honored the past, and we honored what Reverend Elma started. And we asked the question, who have I come here to be? And it's a question that will be with us for a long, long time, because every single time there is an event, I ask myself, who have I come here to be? We engage with each other. We learned a little bit more about our church. We learned a little bit more about the thriving ministry model. And we had a whole lot of fun. I mean, I really would like to acknowledge um, those persons who made this place pretty. You see, we have the remnants of the balloons, and we had balloons hanging from the ceiling, and we had two towers of balloons here, and you see that there are still some balloons outside in, this, in the um, vestibule. And I um, acknowledge Jennifer Livingston, Reverend Anne, and her team for that. You did forget them. Uh, <laughs> to never forget them. But man, it was it, in here yesterday, the vibe was just phenomenal. Now, so, so the good news is that yesterday isn't our, wasn't a one-time event. And we have only just begun, and there's a lot more to come. And over the next couple of weeks, we'll be sharing the feedback with you, as well as the initiatives that we're going to be taking moving forward. And of course, the banner. I mean, that is just so absolutely wonderful. And so the message on the banner is our vision for the future. Wouldn't it be great if we could fully embrace the vision of our spiritual magnificence as our personal reality? Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't it be great? Yes. I have every confidence that the work that we do here in this church can help to make this happen. And so this morning, I want to share with you a deeper insight into the awesome gift that we have in this teaching that we call the science of mind taught in this church that we call the Temple of Light, Center for Spiritual Living. Now, when Reverend John was a little boy, you know, the, you know the little Johnny that we talk about, he once had to memorize the 23rd Psalm. Well, he tried really, really hard, but he just couldn't get it all together. So when it was his turn to recite, he got up, and with his sassy self, he said to the teacher and the class, the Lord is my shepherd, and that's all you need to know. <laughs> well, I'm here to tell you that I received that very, very same message over 34 years ago when I came here for the first time, and I had my first counseling session with Reverend Elma. She sent me away with instructions to say the 23rd Psalm 10 times every morning and 10 times every evening. Up to that point, 
I felt as if life was doing this to me. Right? And yes, there are, I try to do this. But I still felt like this. How many of you can relate to this? Because life seems to make that um, happen. And even when, when I was most vulnerable, you know, I mean, you know, I felt like I needed some serious sorting out because, I mean, if I looked like this, really, can you imagine how it must be in my life? And there were some very well-thinking gentlemen that offered to sort me out. <laughs> Thankfully, I didn't take that route and opted for Reverend's special sorting out. She made me realize that at the center of my being, there is a perfection that nothing, absolutely nothing can crumple. So from then on, I was hooked, and I began to take every single class that I could afford. I felt like a thirsty traveler coming upon fresh spring water in a cooling oasis. The teaching had a resonance with me that was so strong, it was like nothing I'd ever experienced. It, it helped me to nurture a, a deep, unsinkable, and unshakable faith and belief in the presence and power of God and in the practices and the principles of the science of mind. I learned how to develop spiritual practices that I now use to direct my life, to fuel my day, and which underpin the way I act and react to people, situations, and circumstances. It was here that I came to know and understand the great power that I have available to me. And I learned that as I acknowledged this power and make the choice to live from it, I became master of my own life with the ability to live fully and powerfully from my spiritual magnificence. The good thing is that we all get to experience our spiritual magnificence when we are in our creative element, when we are living our divine purpose when we sing and dance and make music and develop new technology and, and, and write winning proposals and solve problems and nurture our children and tend our gardens. We demonstrate resourcefulness when our pockets and purses and bank accounts confront us with the experience of luck. Can you relate to that? And we find a way to get our stuff done anyway and make things happen. We experience our spiritual magnificence when we rise above the limitations of ill health and disease, and when we choose to use words infused with love and light, and which open people's hearts, and which have the power to heal and lift us up above appearances. The truth is, though, that we all want to have a good life. Isn't that true? We want a good life. We want loving relationships. We want success. We want financial freedom. We want success and joy. We want wisdom and discernment to make right choices so we know where, where to get proper sorting out, right? And we want to have a vibrant, healthy body. And we can have it, all of it, in spite of the appearances or the diagnoses or the numbers on the balance sheet. In this church, we teach that there is a power for good in the universe greater than you, and you can use it. We learn that if you change your thinking, you will change your life. This is the key to unlocking life's joy, prosperity, and meaning. As we become more comfortable with this teaching, we learn to take responsibility for our thoughts and beliefs because the law of mind uses them to shape our lives. And so because the law of mind truly works, and it is done unto you as you believe, changes will begin to occur. The affirmative prayers that we have learned begin to result in what we call demonstrations, which is answered prayer. We begin to attract money, jobs, new relationships, success in business, etc. As one writer puts it, our prayer work begins to result in the manifestation of princes, Porsches, palaces, and parking spaces. We feel like we are on a roll. God is good. Life is good. I am good. And then life happens. As we would say in our vernacular, the dolly house mash up. 
And this is a story that I'm going to share that explains that. So there's a young archer and his teacher, his master, walking off, walking out in the, in, the, in the forest. And the youngster decides to show off his developing skills. And so he pulled his bow and he expertly shot an arrow way into the distance into a tree. And if that wasn't enough, the archer decided to take another arrow and aim, and he shot it off, and it went bullseye into the middle of the first arrow and split it in two. He turned to the master and said, what do you think of that? Without a word, the master walked on a little further along and came to a very deep canyon, which, which had a log that was spanning it to the, to the other side. So the master casually walked to the middle of the log, pulled his bow, and shot it off to a target way in the distance. And then he called the youth and said, now it's your turn. Well, the youth came to the blog and he looked down. And he said, oh no, there is absolutely no way I'm going to go and try and shoot an arrow from the middle of that log. Suppose I drop, suppose, suppose. And so he decided that he wasn't going to bother to do it. So the master said, you have great control over your bow, but little over the mind that lets loose the arrow. Friends, we are not here in this church to teach you how to shoot arrows from a log over any canyons, but we will teach you how to use your mind. And even though you might feel like, where is it now? Like this sometimes. The principles of truth teach that you are perfect, whole, and complete at the very core of your being. And you can apply this truth to, th to turn things around. As Revelation 21, 5 says, Behold, I make all things new. Our founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes, tells us that the master teacher, Jesus, diffused a healing power which touched people into wholeness, his command still the wind and the waves. His knowledge of spiritual law fed thousands. His consciousness of peace calmed the troubled mind. His love was a healing balm for the sick. Too often when we are challenged, we err by entertaining our doubts and nurturing our anxiety, limitation, and fear. The path of struggle is really quite painful, isn't it? And we don't want to live there. We don't want to stay in that place. It says, part of the 23rd Psalm says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. But the other part, part that you never learn is, is, I'm there, but I will not stay and build a condominium. So life happens, but we need to get out of that ASAP. So you may ask yourself, so why can't I perform the miracles that Jesus did? Why, why is it that when I have a wonderful demonstration today, life goes south tomorrow? Why can't the magic last? Too often when, when we are challenged, we maintain our doubts and we, we nurture our anxiety, our limitation and our fear. And so which brings us to the fact that we can use this power to walk over the waters of doubt still the waves of confusion and calm the tempests of fear. Which brings me back to the urgent need for us to make the most of our Sunday service experience. So let me ask you a question. How much of what you hear on a Sunday do you remember? And for how long? How many of you consistently and diligently do Reverend John's assignments? Put up your hand. Whoops. Okay. How are you doing applying this teaching in your day-to-day -day life? Because it's wonderful when we're sitting here and we're going home and it's wonderful and we're all uplifted. The songs and the music is uplifted. But what happens when life happens? So the truth is that while we, are, we will hear the message and have great ahas, sometimes the, mind, the mind's default will trip in and it will override the new learning. You just ask a friend on Monday, ask anybody tomorrow what I said today, and see what they say. 
Many people come here because they love the vibe. The teaching makes intellectual sense, and there are a number of other reasons. Some come seeking spiritual, spiritual support when there is a need regarding health, relationships, or money. We welcome everyone who comes for whatever reason. What we want you to know, however, is that this teaching only works if you work it. You see, friends, coming to church is more than coming to a physical structure. This beautiful building is not just a place you come to. It is a living, breathing organism. Our strengths are your strengths. When you prosper, we prosper. Coming to church is about developing a deeper understanding of God, of being, and of our very own spiritual essence, and all that will take us to living and being awakened to our spiritual magnificence. It is about creating a new default position so that when life happens, we don't get crumpled. We thrive and we prosper. I believe that when each of us as individuals can take full personal responsibility for the ups and the downs, for the highs and the, as, as well as the lows, when we apply the principles of this teaching with consistency, rigor, and diligence, I can guarantee, absolutely guarantee, that you will have a whole new level of personal transformation and self-realization. Just imagine what it would be like operating from the depth of your higher consciousness all the time with expanded spiritual awareness and practice. Imagine the impact such a consciousness would have on our lives and on our spiritual community. As a church, we are committed to be in divine partnership with each and every one of you. Another thing, well, we, we, we yesterday, we also had the launch of our beautiful mission statement to song uh, as, a, as a little jingle. Um, the music composed by our own Noel Dexter. There's a little strip of paper in your programs. If, if you don't have one, just, and if, if, or if you have and the person beside you doesn't have one because I think there were just a few printed, just share with someone else. And um, I'm, I'm gonna ask Maestro to play it for you so we can just get a sense of our mission statement and we're going to sing it every single Sunday. Maestro, let's hear it one time. Now you cannot get a sense of how it sounds. You may sing now. Ready? The temp. All right, again. Closing, the challenge that we have is to make a choice this very morning, Sunday, July 23rd, in the year 1900 and... <laughs> in the year 2070. I just want to make sure you are still awake. <laughs> to play a more proactive role in the work of our church and to make the best use of the tools and principles that we are given. And so here are, here, here are a few tips. We have to make the choice, first of all, to stop, to come out of the stands. You know, some people go to a football game or a basketball game or you go to NDTC and you watch and you say, oh, 
that one shouldn't, that why never play that part. And, you know, and we have lots to say about what's happening from the outside, from the stands. I'm inviting you now to come out of the stands, get down onto the field and play the game. And you can do that by have a, you can have a conversation with Reverend Sonia this morning or Reverend Anne and ask about the Loving Action Ministries and ask how you can serve. Certainly one thing for sure, this fan count out on Thursday. You feel it? Yes. It's hot, don't. Well, how do you think the fan going to get put back up there? Yes, we have to get it put back up there somehow. And what, it, and what will it take? <laughs> Lord, honey. <laughs> yes, it does take prayer. Yes, but they say you have to pray and move your feet. All right, so um, I challenge you. This fan is going to go back up, a new fan, brand new, by, by Sunday, okay? And I, 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 I charge one of you, two of you, a number of us together to put together to make this fan happen. Agreed? Yes. Okay. I ask that you make an appointment without delay to see a minister or a practitioner. And you may say, but there's nothing wrong in my life. I'm fine. And that's okay. Have the conversation anyway. Because it is certainly one way to, 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 to get your spiritual practice going. And to keep you, as we say, prayed up. So that when life happens, you can sort out yourself. A thing that we, can, we need to do is to stop telling the stories of what's not working. Stop telling stories of he do, she say, he never do, she never say. And even with our own lives, I can't, I put my bad back, my, 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 my shoulder, my this, my, you know. So stop telling those stories. And, and, and to ensure that whatever we say is in harmony with love, light, and truth. To be a benevolent presence in any group or any situation. To be that light that shines. And take responsibility for communicating responsibly. And to make a commitment every single Sunday to meet someone new. That would be really fantastic. And so, this is a charge I have for you. May you always know that you are forever one with God. May you always have a smile in your heart and a song on your lips. May you draw from the limitless wellspring of wisdom, power, and discernment that you have within you. May you dance through life with love, peace, joy, and harmony as your partner. May you always know that you are greater than the limitations of any condition that you can possibly meet. May showers of plenty and abundance rain upon you always and forever. May you live the largest, fullest, the most beautiful and magnificent life that you can possibly imagine. May you continue to uncover the power, the beauty, and the awesomeness of your spiritual magnificence. And so together, let us say, and so it is. One more time. And so it is. Namaste.